Are you in an abusive relationship with your slackline gear? Check out some injury reports on this episode of How Not to Highline. I'm in an abusive relationship with my slackline gear. Uh, one time, I fell off a long line, about 100 meters long. I was doing some bounce tricks, and at the top of a bounce, I fell about four and a half meters down onto my, my wrist, which so, somewhat dislocated my hand. And I went, went to the doctor, a few doctors actually, got a bunch of x-rays, some uh, MRIs, and they were not able to find any injury. So it sat uh, injured for about 14 months and developed hardcore arthritis in there to the point where I had to get a wrist fusion. And so now I have a stiff wrist that no longer can flex have a metal bar in there for life, and all 11 bones in my wrist are now fused together. Hi, I'm in an abusive relationship as well with my leash. Took an un my first uncontrollable leash fall, caught the finger, broke it. Ended up taking about two months to heal after a f spiral fracture. So one time I thought I was sending, and then I fell in the heartbreak zone, and it broke my heart. Hi, my name is Dominic, and I'm in an abusive relationship with my slackline gear. So I was on a midline, and it was my very first time being tied in up on the midline and I had gotten up and fallen a couple of times and then on that second time I had fallen uh, I had spun around many times then I had gotten back up onto the line without untwisting the leash and then I stood up and I fell again but this time the rope wrapped around my leg and it yanked on my knee and it left really bad rope burn and bruising and it really pulled whatever was inside my knee and that hurt for a while. I uh, really really hurt myself at breathe. I was trick lining. I uh, tried a trick called a dirty bastard where you stand on your feet and then you 360 onto your chest. Landed right on my face and just gave myself a black eye. I was like where's my eyebrow? And just shot it right off my right off my face. Wow, I was uh, really ravaged. Ravaged by my, my slack line equipment. Me and my Highline gear get masochistic sometimes, but it's consensual. My name's Anthony, and I have an abusive relationship with this Slackline gear. Specifically my leash. So I was uh, on a 70 meter long nylon Highline in Carson, Washington, at a place called Panther Creek Falls. And I took a leash fall that uh, ripped, up, ripped my finger off. So what happened was I was holding exposure, and I took a pretty typical front flip whip, and when I took that whip, I was anticipating to climb the leash on the simultaneous next bounce. So when I stuck my left hand out and I took the, the front flip whip, anticipating to climb the leash, the leash got wrapped around my finger, took my whole body weight, uh, crushed my finger, and then almost ripped it off clean. So yeah, it was a compound dislocation and my friends had to rescue me from the high line. So, yeah, thanks guys. You know who you are. You rescued me. So, uh, I, got, uh, I got hurt at CRG uh, about two years ago. I uh, ended up decking on the 80 foot line down in the creek. Um, I ended up cracking my eye socket and you can still kind of feel it right in here. Um, I didn't go to the ER or anything, but I did have like a golf ball size uh, bleeding uh, sore on my eye for about a week. Um, From walking in the no-fall zone? Yeah, I was walking in the no-fall zone. Uh, I should have gone a little closer and the water was going really fast. Um, and uh, the other people on the other side, I couldn't hear them and they couldn't hear me. And so it was kind of like a bad situation. Um, mm -hmm. I could have scooted out a little bit and kind of just played it safer. I was at Breathe this year and uh, we were back at the BC uh, Slack Pond. And I just met Jerry. And uh, he told me about the uh, arrow two being his favorite line, and so <laughs> I went out on it. And uh, I'd never done anything like that before. Never really been on that long of a high line either. And uh, took a, a couple whippers and it felt pretty good. Uh, and then I took another whipper and my harness kind of pinched my dick, and uh, <laughs> it really hurt. And, and I, I, I kind of checked up on it after I I, I got uh, back on the line. And you know when you get that injury where it's like kind of like white skin at first and then like suddenly it starts bleeding and so my dick is just like 
is, is bleeding and, and I'm hovering in this dirty ass pond and I was trying to figure out what to do and so I untied and I got off and yeah, I ended up showing Jerry my dick actually that day. So that was a really fucking, that was really cool. But yeah, yep, yeah, that really hurt. <laughs> All right, down in Texas, Austin, Texas, we do a lot of water lining because it's always pretty hot. Uh, one injury that you should always watch out for is when you fall off the water line, always try to go for a dive or feet first because if you fall parallel sideways and you get that water flat right up on your ear right there, you're likely to rupture or partially tear your eardrum. I've had that injury, it's not fun. And it takes about a good two weeks or a little bit more to heal afterwards. If not, if it's a full rupture, you're gonna have to go get to a doctor for that. I got hurt once real bad on a high line. I was 180 meters into a 200 meter line and I didn't stand and it hurt my feelings. <laughs> well, a couple of months ago, I was high lining on a 60 meter um, high line over at Pingree Park in Colorado and I crossed the line and I tried to turn around while walking and I while I was turning I fell and my knee hit the leash wings and that injury was one of the worst that I, well the worst actually that I had on a high line almost like the only one and it hurt for weeks after that uh, or like a month after that it, it was still hurting now it's it's all right but it was it was a painful one for sure. Um, I was highlining and I took a leash fall and grabbed my leash because that was a bad habit and my leash wrapped around my hands and so when I like hit the bottom of my whip it like untwisted and I had a spiral fracture on my finger and got two pins and surgery and yeah. How long ago? Uh, it was about a year ago actually, almost exactly a year ago. I almost have full range but not not totally. Like it's probably not gonna be the same. The only time I've ever been hurt on a slack line was a park line and I was learning how to chongo and I fell out of the chongo backwards and hit my elbow on the ground and I couldn't straighten my elbow for two months. So it was around three months ago at Pengree Park, got on a high line there was about to send it three-fourths of the way there, would have been my first highline send, and then I blacked out. Next thing I know, I bob feet first, which throws my head down, and my finger got jammed in between the knot and the harness. Didn't know it was broken at first, and had to climb back up with one hand. It was a fun challenge. <laughs> Afterwards, taped a stick to it, was hoping I could go out the next day to Highline because I was in Looney World from the adrenaline. <laughs> but yeah, waited a month and a half, had it rebroken, surgery, four pins, a plate, but it is the sacrifice and I'm back now. <laughs> One time I was highlining in Boulder and I stood up and took a step back and the leash so wrapped around my lost. ankle. And when I whipped, it like pulled my ankle like this, and the front and back tendon of my foot were like so really like fucked up for about six months. And and that sucked. I've been slacklining for a few years now. The worst thing that I've ever seen was a catastrophic failure of a ratchet that wasn't backed up, and it popped off at a high velocity, struck my friend on the top right of his shoulder, and just knocked him out cold for 90 seconds. And it, it's just really important to back up your, your ratchet trap. It's such an easy thing you can do, and they eventually will fail. I mean, it's almost an inevitability. So the way I fall on a high line, I fall onto my butt, and sometimes my foot gets caught in the backup line, and the backup line wraps around my toes and pulls them, and so I've sprained a lot of my toes that way. Yeah, I'm in an abusive relationship with my slack line. Uh, I took a fall last week, and... Uh, it is okay, okay, okay. the tip of my pinky. Oh, she's good. <laughs> I have had one injury where I sprained my ankle learning flips and tricks in the younger years of my slacklining time. Well, yeah, the consequences of spraining your ankle after learning some flips on a slackline is, uh, for me, it was just being on crutches for a couple weeks. So I was trying a uh, rocket mount on a tubular 60 meter line, and uh, basically I bottomed down on the backup and as I did I arched my back and hyperextended it and um, I already have a bulge disc back there and it compressed it and then I took a weird whipper and I've been in pain for like two weeks since. <laughs>
Uh, my name is Steven, and I got injured uh, just slacklining, and I fractured my wrist. Um, so I was slacklining uh, pretty high up. It was like one of the first times I ever rigged a 120 foot line with my friend. And it was just above the ground, so we had to get the anchors up really high. And uh, my friend started recording me, and I was like, oh, I totally got this. And uh, as I was taking a step, um, I wasn't really good with my left foot forward, and I fell backwards. And I just kind of like put my hands behind my, behind my back, and I just landed straight on the ground like this. And I actually have a video of it, and it, you can hear the crack in the video. How long was your wrist busted? Um, it was never in a cast. I never did, um, but I couldn't move it for like three weeks. I just kind of didn't go to the doctor for it and uh, kind of just worked itself out. You know, <laughs> I can still do handstands. When I first started highlining, I was on a rig called Kitty Pool in Boulder, Colorado, and I whipped and just stretched wrong. It was like, uh, I don't know, what is it like? 16, 20, no, it's probably 20 meters. And um, it just, my whole side got extended and I tore my oblique to some <laughs> degree. So that took about a month to recover from, a month and a half. Wow. I tore or strained it of some type. And then the other one was lawn lining and I'd gotten used to catching on high lines and I flipped underneath the line to catch it and missed the catch, hit my head on the ground. Ow. Concussion. Nine months. Oof. Ooh. Like but I have a history of concussions, so my brain's like already pretty fucked and so <laughs> it just gets worse with every consecutive one. <laughs> So I too have also gotten hurt. I got my finger smashed while rigging between a big rock and a bigger rock, pulled it out and couldn't use my finger for a year. You can actually see that in my first few episodes of How Not to Highline. So I thought highlining was an all or nothing sport, but you can get hurt even if you don't die. And there's a gurney. So um, there you can get hurt in the middle of a high line from the rings hitting a cliff edge or landing on the ground from slacklining. There's some risks involved with this sport. Therefore, you shouldn't high line.